Oh, well, hello, Insannies. Gareth, did you know my fans are called Insannies? Happy to hear that. Pretty good, right? Yeah. Um, Welcome <laughs> to Mean Inspiration. This is episode blank. Who knows when it'll be aired. I'm here with Gareth Reynolds uh, of Dollop fame. Is that your most famous credit? Uh, I was on the Real Wedding Crashers. Uh, he was on so the that and the dollop, crashers. I'd say. And then your commercial. You just and then I did a commercial with Tony Stewart about seven or eight <laughs> years ago for Sunoco. Um, oh, Sunoco. That's a big company. Oh, yeah. It's the pond I'm swimming in. Yeah. Did they was, pay you in gas cards? Uh, they gave me money. Oh, you got money? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then I got to spend the day with Tony Stewart. Again, the guy you're very impressed with. I don't with. know who that is. Yeah. But if you did, imagine how great that would be. Is he? Okay. So you told me he was a race car driver. Is mm -hmm. he? Uh, he killed someone. Oh, he did? Yep. Yeah. He ran a guy over. Uh, That's fun. That was after I met him. Not like right after, like years at later. Um, Do you think you had an impact on his life, like butterfly effect that led him to? I like to think so. <laughs> I like to think that I was really... Integral to that. Do you remember who else was up for the commercial? No, that's not how it works. They're not like you don't just see someone in the commercial and you're like, "Hey, man." What do you mean? Do I see like like you're audition? waiting in the audition? Yeah, like, no, no, I'm in the zone. I would see the when same I, people when I used to go up for commercial. I just I get in the zone, which means I get really high and be late. That's a good idea, actually, because you want to let them know that you don't need them. Yep, that is actually <laughs> probably the vibe they respond to the best. I honestly think they do. I like to go in and alpha them. Um, I get a lot of people. Uh, you said Alf at them, right? As in alf you're being at them, Alf. Yes, yeah. I come in and okay. I. Okay. I don't remember what Alf did. A lot of stuff. He ate cats. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Did he eat cats? Yeah, I think he threatened to. In microwaves. And he was trying to cook them in ovens. <laughs> Yeah. Why was that okay, Peta? Where the fuck were you? <laughs> that, that what was Alf to? Is he an alien? He was. Yeah, he's an alien life form. Alf. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're embarrassing me, Gareth. You're funny. Why? Because you're younger than I Do am. You know what I like? I like that this is. I don't think I'm that much younger than you. you would, we have the Alf gap, which Alf, a lot I of people watched. say. I what? watched it. I just didn't pay Absorb? attention. Absorb. Okay, that's cool. But you. Okay, so on the dollop, you are like dumb. I play, a, I play a character <laughs> named Gareth who uh, doesn't know a lot. And uh, Gareth's a fun character to play. Uh, <laughs> but now you get to be the Dave and I, I'm the Gareth. Is that how it's you working? You know more than me. Yeah. I but it's like stuff like, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Well, it's not like historical stuff. Like I remember Alf details better. But Alf is alien life form. And I just asked if Alf was an alien. I mean, that's pretty bad. <laughs> Yeah, but That's you were a kid. Sad. I was a you child. were a child. I was a child. I can't be held responsible. For and you didn't go to Sylvan, mom. Yeah. yeah, my brothers got. We were talking about Sylvan Learning Center. You didn't get to go. I didn't get to go. And my your brothers. Simple got brothers to go. went. They were so lucky. They got toys and ice cream. Yep. I was just home being able to read. Yeah, and all I got was a brain that worked right. <laughs> I really couldn't read. I don't know why I didn't get to go. I think back to like, like. I, when I was in high school, they were just starting to prescribe Adderall or like Ritalin like ubiquitously. But I good word. I think that I would have functioned so much better with those. I mean, even when I've like taken them as an adult, I, you are like, yeah, you know what helps speed. Speed really yeah. like helped me lock in. To well, details. especially with writing jobs, you're like, oh yeah. I mean, but I stopped. Best. I stopped taking it for writing jobs because I was like, <laughs> I saw like. You'll become like <laughs> addicted to this, and that'll be really weird. It does make you crazy. I mean, you oh, turn yeah. insane. Do you remember when Obama caught the fly? Yep, killed the fly. Yep. He killed the fly like that. That's how Adderall is for me. Where it's like that. What was that movie? Limitless. I feel like that was uh -huh. just about Adderall. I think it kind of was. I mean, it was a different pill, but yeah, yeah. I think but, yeah, it was just a two-hour Pfizer commercial. <laughs> it was a pretty good commercial, but I had to stop doing it. It gives me jaw problems. It's crazy. Yeah. Get insane! It's like your nose gets blown yeah. out. You snort it, right? You snort it. You might, you're, you're supposed to snort it. That's my. That's why one. it comes in a powder. It's weird when you're a kid to like learn that. Yeah, it, well, we used to call it kitty coke. Like, because you would coke. be like, yeah, that's what you'd be doing. You'd be like, because we did snort it when I was in high school. You'd be like, all right, cool. I call it homework coke. Yeah. Because it's cocaine for, but with a purpose. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. But anyway, my brothers are special needs, and I'm not, and it's just not fair. Sorry, heart goes out to you. Thank you so much. Now, okay, do you remember the stuff you learned on the dollop? I remember some of it. I mean, we've done a lot of episodes, so like people will say like reference an episode, and I'll be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. 
Yeah. So there are times where it's just kind of, I forget it. I don't listen. I think if I listened to it, it would probably help. What is that crazy, though, to listen to your own podcast? Crazy. Like, I think I have to listen to these to learn the way that you have to watch your stand up to yeah. learn and stuff, but I don't want to. Oh, yeah. I, really I mean, I listen to my own stand up. I, I listen to my, my stand up, like, when I listen to it, it is like, I'm just like, oh, I hate him. I'll yeah, kill it's him. so upsetting. Shut up. Have you watched video? I started oh, yeah. videotaping. Oh, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's humbling. But it's better. That's a little bit better. I'm a little bit more physically narcissistic than I am. Other you mean ways. that you feel like I would rather I would rather watch like see because that seems easier to fix though if I'm moving in a weird way or walking in a weird way. Right. And I'm like, all right, I like my outfit. You know what I mean? I can be like the outfit's OK. When I'm listening, I'm like your voice. You sound like a dude. You say like all the time. You say, um, you stop talking for about five minutes in between each joke for no reason. <laughs> you say, um, you forget. You ask the audience where you were. A lot of times I go, what was I talking about uh, to the audience, which is a gift. For I them. had I had a list, like a list of 10 things I was doing. And I, when I was working it, like when I was trying to kind of get off the notes, I would be like seven and like multiple <laughs> times. An annoyed person would be like, you already did set. You did seven twice. Let's like, All right, let's, guys. I only think it's someone in the front, the responsibility. Like you have to be, you have to be my ADD mentor. They don't know that if you're in the front, you're working that night. Too. Yeah, yeah, you're you're on the job. Yeah. Give them a camera, film me. Yeah, and then you know, take notes, tell me what I need. Yeah, I'd just be like, this footage is garbage. Yeah, why? Did why? You why are you in the front row? What are you doing up there? Uh, did, did you watch Road Work? A tells special. I did. I like how he made the audience member do that. That was great. That special was. It was so good. Yeah. Also, all specials should be that. They should all be at different clubs uh, because it's, it's so, so much more impossible too to just have one perfect interesting set. Yeah, it is and it's I think I mean I think it's also interesting to see like how does material play other yeah. places? Like what are these other places? Like the clubs he picked were hilarious. <laughs> like was. the stress factor, <laughs> like the phone on the wall, you know, like <laughs> that's always been a weird thing. <laughs> but yeah. And he um, did. He got an audience member to film it. So I got a parking ticket today. You said you got one too? Yeah, I got one today as well. What time did you find yours? I found it probably around like noon. Oh, I found mine before yours. I don't want to brag. Is that I thought maybe we found our parking tickets at the same time and there was some sort of like weird a rom -com. coincidence. Until a parking ticket at the same time <laughs> brought them closer together. Well, did I ever tell you about the time that I shit my pants and called my dad about it? <laughs> no. And he hung up on me? No. I shit my pants. <laughs> I shit my pants and I immediately Where? called my dad. Slow down. I was okay. I was, I was opening for. Oh, I this just is found way out. I was at a coffee shop in Brooklyn. I was about five blocks from my house. I had just found out that I was opening for Jim Norton for the first time. I was like two and a half years into comedy. This is the biggest break I've ever gotten. Yeah. It was out of nowhere. It's shit your pants big. Yeah, it was big. It was like you're gonna let this fucking fart out. You don't yeah. give a shit. Right. You're a champion. You're a fucking feature. Yeah. You're, you're a working comedian. You're a working comedian. He did switch me to host because I bombed so hard. Anyway, sure. I learned a lot from that audience. Well, yeah. That was the scariest <laughs> thing I've ever had to do in my life. Oh, no. And I did it with shit in my pants. I decided wait, wait, to not get... take the shit out of my pants until I did the job. No. Wait, okay. So you... okay, so slow I'm down, at and then the I do want to hear that next part. Okay, so I'm at the coffee shop, and I um, I take a step. I get the, the news. I take my coffee. I get a, take a step outside, and as I'm leaving, the door is creaking. I'm like... I'm confident I can take a I can take a fart. Take a fart break. <laughs> take a no one's gonna hear it. It's like, but who cares? I'm about to open for. Who Jim cares? Either way, it, it, at this point, you're a comedian. If you do it, it's just funny. Yeah, it yeah. could be a good bit. I could open yeah. with it. Yeah. So then it's a shard, which is the ultimate betrayal of the sure. body. Yeah. And so then I've shit myself, and I still have this cup of coffee, and I have the five blocks home. So I'm like, I may as well call my dad. Yeah. He's fun. He'll make me feel better. So I call my dad. So wait, are, are you? Is there any step in between calling you? Are you thinking, is your plan to just walk home with I'm your shit get pants? Home. Yeah, you're it's gonna not go like, there. It's not like a tur you know, it's a shard. Sure. Okay. <laughs> so your plan is I'm squish squashing. A five block I'm not gonna walk. go back into the. You're not gonna go into shop. the coffee shop and There's go to no the bathroom. There's no turning back. Clean. Once you've sharded, you gotta move forward. But in it's your about... story, you just have opened the door, so you could go back into the coffee shop and be like, hey. It's I'm not, gonna pee because I gotta go a longer I'm way than be five like, blocks. Hey, did, were you guys enjoying writing your? Fucking. Also, everyone knows me at the coffee shop. Obviously, I'm very loud. Yeah. I think I've probably been written in as annoying girl at coffee shop in a lot of screenplays. That's a big thing. 
But I did have one moment in my re- of realization with my ex boyfriend where I, I woke him up in the middle of the night because I just had this I couldn't sleep and I started this is when I used to smoke weed and so I was panicking and I just imagine what it would be like to be someone in a coffee shop and I walked in and I, all of a sudden I got really self conscious and I was like wait what? a second it, I woke him up I was like am I too much you freaky Friday yourself I freaky in the night myself I just had a moment of like I was like do people think I'm crazy and he started Wake laughing up. he went. <laughs> I woke him from his sleep to shake him to ask him if I was too much. And he said, he went, you're a lot. That was his answer. You're a lot. Well, that, I mean, to, to shake someone awake in the middle of the night, of course, you're too right. much, it's, you are setting yourself up for, well, And it took another night is, for me to imagine that moment. Sure. And then I had to wake him again to be like, I'm sorry, I woke sorry, you. I just, I just experienced what I did to you last night. It was really, you know, I'm a, uh, yeah, I just never realized that I come off crazy to people, even though I do notice people call me crazy a lot. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, I just had had that moment where I'm like, wait, people think I'm crazy? Anyway, so. Okay, not, so your plan okay, so is I've to. Shit my pants. I'm not walking back. Home. Call my dad. Uh-huh. He, I go, dad, I just shit my pants. He hangs up on me. Okay. And I'm like, why would you hang up on me? Right. Like, You've got great the? news from New York. Yeah, What's like, dad, deal? how dare I'm making you? It. I'm squish washing. You can't do this to me. Yeah. So then I call him back. I'm like, why did you hang up on me? And he's like, I'm just sick of you and your mother and your pranks. I'm like, what does this have to do with mom? And he goes, well, your mother just shit her pants too. So he thought we were pranking him, but really we had just both shit our pants at the exact same time. That's, That's why what? I was asking if maybe we got a parking ticket at the exact same time. So uh, no. Sometimes the universe. I, yeah, sometimes, wow. Brings you together. Wow. I mean, your dad had like the sixth sense moment. Wait yeah. a minute, they really did shit? Yeah, we've been shitting our pants the whole time, Dad. <laughs> oh my God, this shit's coming from inside the pants? We've had skid marks in our <laughs> pants this whole time. Oh my God. Uh, speaking of skid marks, we are um, sponsored yeah. by Tampax, Pearl Pocket, for little pocket ones when you are embarrassed and don't want people to see your tampons. Yep. So uh, you hide them, slide them over your sleeve. Yeah, well, no the, what's great about those is you put those in your jeans and someone goes, what's that, a tampon? You go, it's a jewel, dickhead. Yeah, it's not a fucking, so and then the you have to really, jewel. you really have to. You light it and you smoke it. Yeah, like you a, have like to a, open it and actually do it. Yeah, you, you light it like a jewel. If you want one, there's one right there for you. Oh, I'd love to smoke one. Um. So, anyway, I actually am for period huts. I think we should have the huts back. What does that mean? Where they send the women out, they used to send women to huts when they're on their period. Right. Sounds good to me. Let's do it. Yeah, if you're pushing it, I think let's go to huts. Don't you think it would help everything? <laughs> oh, I, I mean, you, I definitely think you'll find a lot of guys who will be like, well, "Honey, let's hear her out." <laughs> I think she's got a pretty a good hut idea. I like how you've deflected. You said some guys. That's these, a good response because you don't have to have any. Some of these guys out there. Now you've been in. Have you been in a lot of long term relationships? Uh, I've been in one like pretty long one. I've been I was in one for like five years, oh, and then long. I've had like a two year, and then a couple one years. So you know enough to know that it's it's a problem. <laughs> what the that that we problem. need a hut. This is a problem. The what? This the, is a problem. The period's a problem. Or this the, is a problem. Or the tampax are a problem. They're your sponsor. The period is a problem. Okay, well be the clear. The tampon is your, a solution. Well, they're your sponsor, so you're banging the sponsor's product, saying you're the problem. So it's a problem. Okay, right. The period is a problem, not the tampax. That's the solution. You get temporarily mentally ill, but it's fine. Whatever. You just gotta try to not lash out. Yeah. Whatever. It's so what? It's just try not one lash week out. out of the every month. It's all the Doesn't time. Sound like it's a so lot. weird and kind of the week before when as, you're kind as the gender what? that sits on the sidelines. It really doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> no, I feel bad for. I honestly feel bad for those around me. I think it's just unfortunate for all. Yeah. It's yeah. unfortunate for all. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm not furious that it doesn't happen to me. I'd rather be in my position where I'm the reactor rather than the conduit. Right, but we get to have um, kids where where they cut our asshole and pussy open into one hole, and then it kicks like a out. Stargate. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's just like a Stargate. Yeah. But so it's awesome. Yeah. Then but you get to call your kid a time traveler. He's from the future. He is from the future. He came from here. <laughs> He's the one that the scroll had written about. <laughs> also. Um, what else do we get to do? Oh, we get menopause, then we also we could turn a new type of crazy. It's really fun. Well, oh. does menop- does menopause shift the crazy in a different direction? I like to call it woman pause. Sorry, <laughs> as you should. I'm wow. You know, there's some guys out there who don't respect. They don't that. respect it. I'm not one of them. Menopause, I think you just turn. I think you are really. I don't know. Or is it Did like a wizard's curse, crazy? and you're suddenly like, ah, I'm normal. I don't think it is. Oh. I don't think it is. I would hope that it'd be like a wizard's curse. I think, no, my mom doesn't make it sound fun. But I, yeah, okay. My mother seems normal. 
She always seemed normal, though. That's nice. Yeah. Everyone I mean, she hated the hut. <laughs> she was always a real bitch about the they hut. They did make her go to the hut. The hut she it could be love. the key. Yeah. It was a pizza hut. But we just put her in it for a that's week. That's how I feel, yeah. Even if it's a pizza hut, just yeah. let me there. Well, I think that actually, sauce. that's a probably a really nice Very modern day compromise if the hut is a pizza hut. And they can get a personal pan or they can hit the buffet. And then you can and get delivery out, but you just can't dine in because that's just for women. Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. And yeah. the jukebox should be free. Ap- without question, the jukebox is free. Comes with a quarter. I'm course. looking straight in the camera. Yeah, I, don't I want did people too. To think this I'm, is, no, this is real stuff. I'm not looking at myself. No. No. Looking can you see yourself? Not really. What, what in the reflection looking? of the camera? No, there's a like, thing over oh, there. I can't get it. But I just. Oh, we also, can white balance out. on That's my legs. Fun. I'm putting it. You know, what? I've always had sweaty. I've had sweaty. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm glad it's on camera. I just want people to know that. You're the I've real deal. <laughs> Put a tampon up there. Stop, stop it up. I need some pads. Stop I need a diva cup for my armpits. A diva cup? Yeah. Do you know what diva cups are? I thought it was what Aretha Franklin drank. <laughs> she does. It's a small. It's a goblet. Cup. Yeah cup that she puts her period in and drinks <laughs> I gotta go I'm guys leaving. this is the period episode <laughs> <laughs> anyway um, when I was in 7th grade I was on the bus and okay. Robert Danielli said it looks like your right guard took a left like your what? right guard took a left because my armpits oh, were sweating and I want to say rude. Robert Danielli good one though I'm on TV and you're not I know this is a podcast and it's YouTube and you could also be on it yeah but, but you've been on TV it's good that's yeah, good. and Talk I fucking pit it out every time. Yeah. I pit right it out guard. every time, yeah. and they still let me on. Yeah. I mean, they had to stop and blow dry my armpits a couple of times. Oh, sure. But Production was a nightmare. Everyone was mad Production at me. Production was a nightmare. Everyone was mad at what me. What they could do with one person in an hour, it took you a week. It took regardless. me a week, but still, Robert. Fuck you. Yeah. Um, all right. So I got some questions from Instagram. Okay. They're bad. Great. They're not good. Well, you said sometimes, Instagram questions, so I would assume they. Sometimes they're good. Are these specifically for me, or these are just? I said for you. I oh, said okay. you were going to be on, but oh, okay. I, I doubt that these ones are for you. But right. well, whatever. I'll answer them for whoever. Let's see. Let's see. How do right. I get? If to they're them? Paul Reiser questions, I'll be good. They're about Paul Reiser. Oh, I'm gonna nail this. Mad about you. <laughs> okay, that was Bert Kreischer's Instagram. You didn't need to tell me. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. This one's good. If you and your mom, wait. If your mom and my, mo- oh, oh boy. that doesn't make sense. Okay, it's a good. Do story. you like anal sex? Do I like <laughs> anal sex? Is the first. It says, question. do you like anal sex, Annie? <laughs> and do you like anal sex? Is that your wrestling name? Wait, I'm just gonna. Do you like anal sex, Annie? It's a it's a character I play on. Uh, uh, Game of Thrones. You born. <laughs> um. Okay, good. Uh, one one down. Well, okay, two down because we got the mother one that was right. not good and you like anal. And then um, what's more attractive, shy a shy fit person or a confident fatty? Go, Gareth. I would say okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> some guys out there would probably say. <laughs> uh, to me, I would say <laughs> a shy fit one would be what I would probably gravitate towards. Yeah, very shy and fit. Yeah. But personality, I mean, I would rather someone who's not shy. And Listen, if you're a shy fatty, you gotta you gotta figure something out. That's a club I'd like to. That's a hut I'd like to get into. <laughs> shy fatty is shy fat. Yeah, that's a. But you'll find some shy fraternity. people. I feel like shy people find each other. I think I think well, the internet is a great thing for shy. I think if anything, like online dating and stuff has now become advantageous for the shy. Yeah. Like, it used to like I remember when I back in the day when you'd have to rub two stones together and go up to a girl and be like, "Hey, you want a shot?" Like a fucking loser. But now you just go to a bar and you're like, ah, they look attractive. I'll I'm go on a dating the stones. app. I'm imagining the stones. Yeah. Where does that saying come from? Well, that's how you would make fire. You would hit, you'd clank stones together and you'd oh go Oh my spark. God, I'm learning so much. Yeah. That's what they do you think I'm dumb? I don't. Okay, cool. I was re- no. it reflecting out of your eyes onto me, so that's why I said it. I was, <laughs> no. I was, def- I was. No, that's inward. I was projecting. That's, that's inward projection. I do get, I mean, my, I, my college went out of business. My, I only went, my high school was like for juvenile delinquents and I only went to Sylvan High I went to Sylvan Learning School uh, <laughs> instead right, of Center right right <laughs> the school it was for semi special ed your school was well it was like for juvenile delinquents or kids with learning disabilities what were you a delinquent kind of okay I was after I went there once they sent me with all the bad kids I got worse that we had one of those schools where I was from and that was that's what happened to a lot of my friends was they were bad kids and they were like oh we're sending them to this place and then they'd be like, we have cocaine now. We should try that. You'd be like, wait, aren't you 
Getting reformed? I would not have stolen a car if I'd stayed in public school. Well, that's interesting. We'll be right back after they tampons. They teach you good stuff. Tamplax. Tamplax. For your mouth. You can actually use a tampon to uh, hotwire a car. You got to rub two stones together. Yeah. Um, yeah, you have to go up to girls at bars. Now, but you did. I think that internet dating is weird. It's the worst. And I think for the position we're in, it's very weird. It's the worst. It's very uncomfortable. I People can find us at all times, yes. by the way. No, I'm not into it. It's I bad. Yeah. Have you had any success? Like career-wise or just in the <laughs> hut? Uh, <laughs> I, uh, what do you mean? With like online dating? Yeah, I, I, there was one time. time, I'm not on Tinder, but I was on Tinder. And uh, I actually one time did meet a girl from Tinder that was like, cool. And we hung out for a couple months. Yeah. Yeah. I've never, it's always been the worst nightmare I've ever been in. It's so uncomfortable. Well, the problem is that you're going just off of like looks, it doesn't which work. I think is like not, you know, like if you're going to meet, like that's why if you meet somebody that you like, it's so much better because you are like, oh, I like the way you look, but I also like, like yeah, there's just there's something, something about else you, that's more... but that's completely voided on like an app, you know? And then there's like this expectation when you go on the date and then you have to like, there's just this like ultimate rejection of someone else. Uh, I just I've done it, it so I've done it so rarely that I've done it twice. It's always been a nightmare. Oh, they yeah. both got laid though, because <laughs> I was like, I don't know how to reject you. <laughs> Never again. Wow. Never again. Wow, that is a. It was the old days. The old days. Yeah, uh, well, this was 2017. Have you ever done Raya? I don't know if we're allowed to talk about it. Ah, uh, yeah, I think I don't think we're allowed to talk about it. We're Otherwise, the Raya kills it. us. They come find you. Yeah, <laughs> the Raya. It's like the ring. <laughs> uh, I tried that one too. Yeah, that one's a maybe worse. I think the whole system is. Flawed. I like when they're like they work at CAA or something. I'm like, oh, good, <laughs> you work at. A, oh, you're an agent. Great. You know, I'm I was telling myself. someone this story the other when I like used to have to dress up like superheroes for kids' birthday parties. The two worst like times was one time when I had to be Mr. Incredible, and I was a Principata Young and Paul Young, which is like a big management company. And Paul Young was at the party, and I was dressed up like Mr. Incredible, <laughs> and I was like, fuck, and I avoided him. But then I was like, did you have a mask? Worse. a mask? Well, Mr. Incredible just had a black mask. Uh, so just like a bandit mask. But then I was like. Some would call it blackface, but that's fine. Go ahead. Well, that's not what the kids would call okay. it. And uh, that's not what they said on the order. And uh, and I was like, man, he should have recognized me. That is kind of weird. That's kind of almost more gutting. The other one was I had to be Batman at William Morris when I was, th when I was rep there back in the day. And that was. Wait, you were actually called to William Morris? Called to William Morris. But not as you, just through the As agency. Batman. Just like, we need a Batman. <laughs> we need a dickhead. Any dickhead will do. And then my boss was like, oh, we'll send this dickhead. And I was like, no. So this dickhead, no. Yeah, and it was a nightmare. A nightmare. That's so funny. All right, well, I want to talk about, I just recently did ayahuasca for the first time. Okay. And I fucking... It was like life-changing. Yeah. It was the best. And then I was talking to you about it. You've done it a bunch, too. I've done it a few times, yeah, and it is. I would say it's life changing. There's just, yeah, it's just it's great. It's so good. Yeah, it 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 maybe <laughs> it kind of flicks a switch in your head for most people where you're like, oh, it's so hard to explain to people too. And then everyone that I would love to do it, the people that I see struggling the most, which I deal with codependency a lot, so I'm, I try to not push anything on anyone. Obviously, you can't push. The the thing they always get tampons, Tampax. You've been only Tampax pushy. I push. And thank you for bringing up our sponsor, Tampax yeah. Pearl Pockets. Now they've contacted you. No. Okay. I just want to let people know that there's a pocket sized tampon for your own meat pocket. Anyway, yeah. okay. So that's what they wanted me to say. Meat pockets. <laughs> <laughs> um. But everyone can't get over the shit, the possible shitting and throwing up. But I don't. I did not have a weird. I found. I think. Experience. I always feel like, uh, like the nausea is like a would be like considered a talking point. Like it's something like people say to be like, "Don't do this." Yeah. But it's like I've experienced nausea during it for sure, but not a lot. And when I have, it's like you're not at the you're you're really not sitting there going like, "Hey, my tummy hurts." Yeah. You're it's like, not that type. Yeah. Of you're just like, nausea. I don't give a fuck. Someone yeah. hold the bag. Let's move on. Well, I had to bring a bucket. I have now realized that anytime someone says bring a bucket, I'm down. That's, That's my well, new. I think you got to back off. I don't from that care. Policy. I don't care. I just think that policy is going to get you in some trouble. I don't. <laughs> some ice bucket challenging of uh, jism. Yeah, oh, that one. Yeah. They said bring a bucket. I said I'll bring a fucking bucket. <laughs> I brought a bucket, but I did puke. But I wanted to puke. I was like, I was down for it. I was like, all right, I got to like purge the shit out of me. I, that's that's true too. Sometimes you do feel like it is like. 
you're actually getting rid of something versus like throwing up. You're like, get it out. I vomited out a bird. Okay. Let's see, to it. some people, they'd be like, that's not real. <laughs> but I'm like, I had completely believed It's you. very hard to explain to people. Mm-hmm. Um, not too hard, but a little bit because they get a little stuck was up. Was it a them. kind of bird? I don't know. I was, okay, so I was, I think it was Brody, honestly, because I was thinking about Brody a lot. And yeah. And I was like in like a, I had already done like all this work on my right side, which was my the masculine So for anybody side. who doesn't know, you basically drink something that tastes yeah, real drink. rooty and dirty. I kind of like how it tasted too. Yeah, there's a little sweetness it's to it. It's kind of sweet. And then uh and then you kind of lay down and you kind of just inwardly trip inside your own yeah. head and have communication on a yeah. level that's kind of an open channel you've this never had. This lady before. came to me who was also me and just handled my shit like I was lying. I I didn't feel it at first, so I took my first cup, I didn't feel it. Right. And then I also fell asleep and I was like, did I fucking sleep through my goddamn ayahuasca trip? Yeah. Because I was just so down and so ready for it. And then the shaman came back around, he offered us more and I went in and he gave me a bunch because I told him that I didn't, wasn't right. feeling it. And then I started to feel it and then I got one more round because I was like, let's yeah, do this Yeah, closing time. Yeah, let's fucking do they put it. put the music on, yeah. They put the music on. No, he was actually chanting and singing the whole time. Helpful. He was so good. Yeah. There was like 20 people, which I thought was going to be too much and it ended up not feeling like too much at all. No. And he, like I felt completely taken care of. But so I was on my right side and I started thinking, I was like spinning about a guy when I went into the weekend. I was like freaking out about this dude. And I was like, why am I doing that? Thinking about that, like you kind when of brought that anxiety When I went into the weekend, and, I was right. having anxiety about okay. a guy that I had just started dating. Right. And I, it was just so inappropriate. It just felt so like inappropriate. And I was like, why am I feeling this way? I was feeling very like unloved and weird and just like very, just I, just really hyper focused on this thing that wasn't, I wasn't really, I don't know, I just didn't know what it was. So I was trying to not think about that and I talked to a guy the night before that was on the weekend and had done it before and he was like, whatever you're thinking about, you should lean into it because there's some sort of lesson there. So then when I was like leaning over, I kind of was asking that question, like what's my deal with dudes? Like why was I feeling this sort of panic or whatever? And she just went, it's your dad. And I was like, oh fuck, like why would I have not thought it was my dad? Yeah. And then it just felt like I said, like I've said, said this before, but it felt like I was like all these locked doors, and then it was just the key to all. I was just like everything opened. I was yeah. like, oh duh. And so my dad was very like <laughs> mean to me when I was little, and so but very loving too. So it was like a give and take of that. So that's like made me very untrusting of people's like love and kindness because right. I was like, there's like an edge to that on the other side. But then also I've always been really afraid of my dad dying because he's older. And so it was like that. I was like so scared of my dad dying. And I was like, this is an inevitable thing that I can't control. And here I am not enjoying the present moment because I'm so hyper focused on trying to control my dad's death, which is 100 percent going to happen. So then I just ha I let him die in my trip mm -hmm. and I was eulogizing him. And I was thinking of him as like this king and just like really like res like loving and respecting him. And I was like crying so hard and I put my hand on my chest and then my ch hand got heavy and his hand was inside my hand and then his body was inside my oh, body wow, and it was yeah. like he'll never ever leave me because i am him yeah so i just started to think about how um like how much i am my heritage and how much i am related to everyone in my family and this tribe that we have and my dad is this king and yeah my siblings and all of this shit and yeah and uh but then I, I still wasn't like ready to puke. I started thinking about the comedy store and I was thinking about all my friends and I was thinking about, Ro it's so embarrassing that I was, <laughs> I've told Rogan about this too. I'm like, <laughs> and I thought about my ayahuasca trip, but it's just like kind of like what a family I'm in and how cool it feels and how awesome everyone is and how down everyone is and was thinking about that. And then I flipped over to the maternal side and I thought about my mom and how she was adopted and I started to feel really bad for her that she didn't, she didn't have that link to her tribe. Yeah. And then, and how I'm gonna have to be cool when my dad dies because my mom's gonna need me. So I have to like figure my shit out so I'm not losing it. I can't rely on her, I have to be there for her. Then I started thinking about Brody and like lost my shit. Brody's our friend that died. I think a lot of people know that, but um, he killed himself like the week or two before I did it. And I was there with a friend of mine that also works at the comedy store and we, um, you know, we're just going through it. Yeah. And uh, so, I just was like really mourning him and I was thinking about just like what like a like just a king he was like he was just such a special like he was my brother and 
and just how much I loved him and how sad it was that he couldn't feel Elvis hugging him because we all loved him so much and it was just sad that he couldn't feel that. And that's when I was like, I, st I was like, I think I want to puke. It just felt like the time to purge it out. And right as I sat up, the shaman who had been singing in, he'd been chanting in another language, started yeah. doing it in English. And for a second, I thought I had learned another language. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, I was like, did I just learn? Did I tell this story on here already? I know oh, Portuguese. So. I might have fucking told this story on here before. I feel like I did. No. Okay, cool. I didn't. Anyway, <laughs> viewers, <laughs> listeners, watchers, <laughs> masturbators, you can continue jerking off. Um, so then I sat up and he started, and I was like, did I just learn a fucking other language? And then he, um, so then he, w what he started saying was, he's like, we bring the, the pain from the dead into the light. It was just such a weird, I couldn't believe he was saying this to me at this time. It was just so fuck. I was like, are you just singing to me, bitch? Like, how is this happening? Don't call me bitch. This is <laughs> but it was just so cool. And, and I sat up and I, I felt like my throat kept like opening up. Like it was like like giving birth to an egg. I felt like this egg with like feathers on it and it was like coming out. I didn't want to force it or anything. And then it felt like my ancestors pushed the puke out and then I puked out, a bird flew out of my throat and I was like, this shit is the best. And then we did it again the next day. Oh really? Yeah, we did back it again back. the next wow. day. Wow, yeah. And I don't remember what happened there. I mean, I kind of remember it wasn't as cool. Yeah, I mean right there, I think that's a pretty good uh, But it was pretty fun, I want to do it again. Yeah. But it made me feel really good. And then I like, I didn't, it, it helped me with so many things like where I'm realizing all of my spinning and stuff is all this like trying to control an outcome. I think at, like when I've like, when my computer's been running slowly and I've had to like call some random place in like another country and someone just like takes control of my computer and they like, you know what I'm talking about? Like you mm -hmm. screen share with someone or something yeah. and they just start digging into your computer like places you didn't even yeah. know. And they're like, do you need this? Yeah. You're like, I don't need that. Yeah. There's just all this shit that can just go. Yeah. And that's kind of what I have started to feel like with it. Like there's, yeah. it's not even necessarily things that I've been focusing on or things that I'm thinking about. A lot of times it's actually probably, it doesn't really matter what you're necessarily thinking mm -hmm. about. There's just stuff that you're going to walk away with that you weren't even, I mean, there's just revelatory moments where you are just like, oh, I should stop that. Yeah, it was or like, so why do weird. I do that? Or yeah. like, oh, yeah, I'm that. I need to be that more and not like get yeah. upset about it or whatever. Yeah, it is. exactly. You and know? just like things just feel like they're all kind of unfolding the way they're supposed to unfold. And yeah. that there really is just only like a love connection. And I felt I was feeling so unloved when I went in. Like I was. Oh, well, that's a great time such to go a in. Loser. I was just like, uh. Yeah, and then but, and I'm, I'm tripping. and I'm like, who doesn't love me? Like, what am I talking about? I'm like, I have. But my fam, my everyone, I have no one that doesn't love me in my life. I have not one person. I think, uh, for I know a couple of people, but uh, <laughs> I think. I, in I this think, room. I think, I think when, like, you think about probably what, you know, the plight of a lot of people is, is that they feel like they feel alone, they feel unloved, mm -hmm. that, you know, I mean, that's just the human mm -hmm. sensation. And, um, and I think that what that has taught me, like you're saying, is, yeah, there is like a level of just unconditionalness mm -hmm. to all that, that if you can kind of find your way to make it good for you and, and hold on to it, it really is just a positive on your life. It it's just, just feels, fine. I, yeah. I said like the first time I took it, I felt like I going in like I was a full balloon and then someone just like let a half the air out. Yeah. And I was just, I felt like whatever. I was yeah, calmer yeah, yeah. about everything, less worried about everything. Less of an airhead, right? Yeah, more less it's of an so airhead. You were so dumb when you went in. I was really not, <laughs> I was really in a bad place. I didn't even know what I was doing. I thought it was a vet, remember? <laughs> I said, why am I going to the vet? I had a dog brain. I really, literally had a dog's brain. Did you have like a specific thing you were trying to work on or you just were like down to do it? No, I've never, I, I really have never even, I mean, I've gone in there at times like, um, not that I've done it a, a thousand times, but I've done it like you know four or five times, and like I've gone so in, jealous. and I've gone in like some one time maybe with something, but even then it wasn't about that. The yeah. other, the first time I did it, I just was, uh, you know, I'd found out about it and was like, what is? I really yeah. want to try it, and you know, like you said, it is just the first time is really really it profound. Was so cool. And then after that, it is just like it just continually feels like it's just ways to kind of whittle yourself more and more into a state where you're not not only are you happier but you feel like yeah. you make other people happier and you're aware of other people more and yeah well, I'm just like I'm so grateful for all the I remember he, the guy would come around the shaman and he was he would like hold our hands up and spit the shit on us I mean it was yeah he was spitting wild uh, yeah 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 the spitting and is by the way I love that part though I was like and spit I think that all takes me, that takes work because I've like I've had it where they're like now you spit and you're just like <laughs> like but they do it they're like Pfft. 
<laughs> it's like going everywhere. And you're like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> anyway, guys, you shit, you vomit, people spit on you. It's amazing. It's amazing. But I have like, I feel like I, like I'm like this all the time now. Like, yeah. Ah. Yeah. Well, it's funny when you say her too. Like the, the feminine, the, it is, to, it's a bef- if, whether you're told or not told, you are like, oh, she's here. She's yeah. around. It's she's so got weird. me. Yeah. It's so fucking weird. And it, it was, I just felt like this was masculine. This was, fi- it was just so weird. And then yeah. I looked it up and that's what people say, that this yeah. is your masculine side and this is your feminine. And then when I get out of yoga, the teacher's always like, whichever side you want to lean. She's like, just right, come out right. on either side. And I always choose like mom or dad. Who am I like yeah. paying homage to in this thing? Are you still doing yoga? Yeah. yeah. Hot yoga? Yep. Core? Yep. Core power? That's for the ladies. It's, You're one of the only dudes. It's for us girls. I mean, it's just for us <laughs> girls. Uh, it's great because, like, on the road, it's it's, it's everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. So it's like you can go do it. I was doing moto yoga, hot I've yoga. Been there. And then... But it's not as hot. Oh, is that how you feel? Yes. Um, it's for the guys. It's for us dudes. girls like it hot. <laughs> girls like it hot. It's hotter in the back of the room. Well, it's so hotter I, if you sit closer to the... There's, like, a thing. You gotta sit thing. in the fucking thing. Yeah. But I stopped going to moto because... I couldn't afford it for a month or two, and then they just kept hitting my credit card to the point where I was like so annoyed. I was like, you have to stop. They were like, well, you didn't cancel it correctly. I'm like, you know I'm not coming into class. You, you, you know, you know I canceled that you're it. You know that you're yoga. Like you're, you know that Eastern I'm not coming peaceful in. Yeah. meditation. Stop it. And you're like, well, card. actually, our business stop model says it. that yeah, uh, you do owe us $67. So, Moto, if you want to give me a free membership, we're all good. Yeah, be like Tampax. Get involved in Tampax. the show. Tampax. Tampax and Moto Yoga. Yeah. But uh, I'm sure it was my fault anyway. For some no. Reason. So anyway, do you like anal? <laughs> Finally, we're back to where it is. That's such an annoying, uh, that's such a dumb question. I, th- I can pretty easily say that prob- no. You know, anniversaries, weddings and anniversaries, <laughs> I'll do it. You got to save something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. A little, yeah exactly. Listen, the puss is going to dry up. The dick's going to stop working. Yep. You're going to need to spice it up in the bedroom with a little asshole. Yeah. I really only hooked you up. like I've, the emerald of sex. Yeah. I just, yeah. Yeah. A little bit of this, a little bit yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, you'll figure ah. it out. A little bubble and squeak. Um, yeah, it's just never been. I don't know why I'm giving this person an answer. This person's like awesome. This is really Sorry. further. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not answering. <laughs> you you answer. Not answering. I do think it's not that fun, but I, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, it's not really that fun. I think both parties probably would rather. Move Some guys to the are into suite. it. Some yeah. guys are into it. I yeah. feel like it's a conquering though. Yeah. See, I don't. I would. I, I feel <laughs> satiated enough with what I've conquered. Some men would say. Some guy. There's some guys out there. Now hear me out. Yeah, I mean it's so funny because some of the call, like the call we had yesterday, was just this guy is just pegging crazy shits going on in his life. Crazy where are the, shit. Where are these crazy calls now? I've never one. We have one, but is it crazy? Uh, he's asking for advice on someone who is crazy. Oh, okay. Wait. But okay. So yeah. Needs to own their own. Yeah. I want to get my own. Cra- I mean. Let's do it. You want to do it? Okay. So this guy's name is Justin, and he says, Hey, Annie, I need some help in discerning quality women. I seem to be attracted to and stick with women who have substance substance abuse problems, (laughs) alcohol mostly. And by the time I see the red flags, I'm already in too deep, and I think I can either help them or things will get better. Uh, Do you have any quick tips I can utilize to help eliminate my codependencies with these types of women? Tampax. Tampax. Pearl. Without question. Pocket. Uh... Let's. Are we gonna call him? Yeah, let's call him up. We're gonna call him. Oh, wow. we're gonna talk to him. Oh shit! Wait, read what he's asked again. Now I gotta pay attention. I thought I was just gonna do a funny voice. Oh shit! He'll tell oh, us. Co- he gets in uh, d- dependent women, right? Alcohol substance. <laughs> <laughs> Take notes. We're about to fucking rock this guy's world. Hello. Hello. Hi, is this Annie? This is Annie. What's your name? You can give a fake one if Justin. you're embarrassed. Justin, what's up? I'm with yeah. Gareth Reynolds from television and movies. Uh, Real and Wedding Crashers, NBC, uh, 10 years ago, Justin. <laughs> How you doing? Very good, very good. Uh, I wasn't expecting this. Oh, you weren't? Okay. Well. My producer's fired. Well, kind of, but I mean, it was late, so I, I assumed. You got somebody else. Annie oh had to God. set up the studio. No. We had to, I had to tape, I had to tape, tape props to the wall. Yeah. Um, okay, so we read your email. You always date alcoholic girls. 
and you have codependency issues. Yeah. Um, my advice, yeah. where are you meeting these girls? Are you meeting them outside bars? Are you meeting them outside churches while they're smoking cigarettes is usually a sign. Something's going well, on. Well, I'm just attracted to women that are opposite of me. I'm very introverted. And I guess I like the idea of somebody else that's more outgoing than I am. Where, where do you where, so? Where do you meet these women? But roughly, like. Well, my first. Uh, I've had two major relationships in my life. One of them was five years. That one I met at work, and then the other one was Tinder. And that one lasted for three years. <laughs> Were you dating Gareth, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, but then, like, what do you do for a date? Like, Bottle for, Jaeger. First, for a date? For, like, for, like, first time you go out with them, what do you do? I mean, drink, that, so it starts off normal. But wait, when you I say drink, think, like, are you yeah, going to, you're meeting normal, them? You're, you're meeting going them. out for drinks at a bar? Right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I would think it's normal to do, test it out, and then, I mean, it seems fine at the beginning. And then later on, once I'm, once I'm hooked in, then I realize that, this person has a problem. Hmm. But you, okay, you, how drunk are they getting on the first date? Are they getting, like, wasted? Not drunk. And then are you going out for drinks because so, you're introverted and you want to have, like, some drinks to loosen up? Yeah, I think so. But, I mean, I don't need it. Like, I can pace myself very well. Like, one or two drinks, I'm fine. Like, it doesn't get me buzzed or to a point where I feel, like, extremely, you know, loose. But would you be able to just go get, like, coffee with someone? Um, I'm thinking of trying that now because it's been, like, six months since my last relationship since it officially ended. So I've been working on myself, uh, like putting myself out there and things to, um, I guess, working on confidence because I suck terribly with uh Well, they, you just failed strangers. miserably with your confidence. <laughs> But working my confidence, yeah. I suck. Uh, yeah. Don't say you suck. Say yeah. good things. You got to look in the mirror and be like, I don't suck. No, you can't say that. You have to say you're cool. I get everything you're saying. Like, I, I understand why you would think going out to a bar or like getting a couple of drinks is a good first date move. I think Annie's right. Like, what I would do is I would just say, try to do like two dates with someone where you just are going to get coffee or you go get a dinner or something like that. You know, if you really like her, something a little more. Uh, like it kind of just maybe sets the tone a little bit differently at the start and see what that does. And then also, yeah, if you go to like, go to lunch with them, if they order drinks at lunch, oh, yeah, that girl is a fucking... It's a wet lunch. Chugger. Yeah. Um, and well, then what you, you could do, yeah. you could also go out and you could be like, oh, I'm taking a month away from drinking. And see if they and panic. And see what they do. And so then for like that month, you go on some sober dates and see what that's like. But you're not being like, I don't drink. You're being like, oh, I do drink, but I like to take a month off. Yeah, that's, that's very smart. Did your mom drink? Um, no, my mom kept drinking away from us. She didn't like the idea. She made it seem as completely taboo. Like, this is a terrible thing. Don't do it. Like, smoking, drinking. She, she kept this pretty much because uh, we lived in a rural area. Mm -hmm. And she just basically overprotected us, made us, made it seem like everything was bad. So, do you think uh, you have a judgment on their drinking a little bit extra because of that? Or are they definitely alcoholics? No, 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 no. I used to have really bad judgment early on, on drink or people that drink. And then I got over it. I realized it's not so bad, but, uh, with the ones that I was with, they had issues. They realized that they admitted it. Uh, like my, the the one the, the story that you read, uh, that one she she eventually said she would drink every day, just to I guess alleviate her stress. Yeah. So in a bad way, and then the other one would binge drink on weekends uh, to the point like it would start off as brunch and then it would just go into a whole day of drinking and then you know she would still drive and say she wouldn't have a, a problem driving because she wasn't drunk. Yeah, and then end up topless in an like, Arroyo? Or is that just Danny Letterman? All right. <laughs> By 3 p.m., yeah. always topless, crying in an Arroyo uh. in Santa Fe, New Mexico. That was how I rolled. I quit drinking a while ago, and it's funny because I just started going on dating apps again. 
And I'm thinking about how I'm just looking at everyone's profile and they're all fucking trying to get hammered. I can just tell. I can't imagine doing like a sober Tinder date. That I mean, that, weird, it right? would be weird. That that level of like I, I would find everything unfamiliar. <laughs> I just don't care. I don't care if the guys that I date drink, but I genuinely or generally have kind of just in the past three relationships, just boyfriends that don't drink. Yeah. They yeah, just don't drink I, that much. Like I, they don't, I, they don't I get mean, wasted. Anymore. I would say a couple things. I would say one, Justin, probably try to like, you know, just try to maybe set a different tone early and then just, you know, talk about what's important to you. And like, I would say if you talk to a girl and you're like, yeah, like I like to drink. It's not, you know, I don't have a problem. I've gone out with two girls who do and see what people say and try to maybe catch it a little earlier. But and then just, yeah, have the strength yeah. to get out of it because I'm codependent yes. as fuck. So I understand that like you want to and then you want to help them and then you're worrying about them and you're thinking about them and but you're think not thinking about, about yourself. Think about your life as a business. It's like oh, if these shit. people, if these people, oh my God. if these people were like in your workplace <laughs> and were doing this to you, would you keep them around? You would probably be like, no. They're fun. I've been a fun worker before. I've been a fun drunk worker. But you need pro- is that a productivity. So, your business is not a restaurant. Yeah. So I would, yeah, I would just. See the business. And I put it that way, like the way that I've uh, taken it in where uh, if it's a business, then I'm in it. I have to try to keep this business afloat. No, no, no. That's the thing. So, uh, you know, have you ever watched Bar Rescue? That's what gets yeah. them on Bar Rescue. <laughs> They're like, oh, I would love to fire he the door guy. He is Bar Rescue. His business I'd is Bar Rescue. I love to fire the door guy, but he's like a friend from college. Like there's tons of excuses. If someone's not working in your life and you deep down know it, then you got to bring in John, yeah, you, Johnny Taffer. And you are, listen. Yeah. I have a problem with this. It's like if you're seeking out these relationships that are like a struggle for you, there is some shit you are not dealing with in your own life. You need to handle your own life. You need to have your best life because you can't, first of all, you just can't, you cannot control another person. You will never be able to control another person. They will always be letting you down. You're always going to be in a state of drama. It's always going to be like entertaining, but you need to just find a chill bitch that just wants to hang out. Not fucking, I'm just assuming there's nipple rings involved. Flash your nipple rings around. I Maybe I'm projecting. Again, I think we're getting a little Maybe I'm story projecting. Yeah, no nipple rings. Oh, sounded a little judgmental there, bruh. What if they're hoops? <laughs> more of a... <laughs> what if they're cool hoops? The women I was with, they were more of a... They like to say daddy. So that was more of that issue. Oh, a daddy issue. Mm, and then was, you're codependent. What, what they were drinking yeah. for. <laughs> so then you're codependent. So then you like to swoop in and be the hero. Oh, but yeah. It's perfect never, storm. You never will be. How old are you? 31. 31? You have time. Yeah, you do. uh, That was the the other thing I'd say. Don't fucking sweat it too much. You got time. Sometimes the game will come to you. Don't worry about it. I also uh, live alone with a cat. (laughs) Yeah, I also live alone, and I dog sit people's dogs just to feel alone. So definitely listen to us on how to really lock it down. We're lonely. Yeah. But it's cool. It's fun. We have really cool jobs. Happy. 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 Happiness matters more. I than wake anything. up very happy every day. Yeah. Go to sleep a little less happy, but yeah. wake up happy again. <laughs> um, yeah, just I just ask them. It sucks. It's not as fun because it's probably very fun to date alcoholic girls. I can imagine. Um, I used to be a fun alcoholic girl, and I think I was probably fun to date. But um, you got to just ask in the beginning, yeah, and just it's a you problem. You you there's something you want out of it. Set your time. You like it, and you just got to ask in the beginning, and then get the fuck out the minute you see it. Yeah, I've been going to therapy. Uh, I barely started a few months ago, so that's working. Therapist is good. She's doing a good job. Uh, she likes to party. Out. She <laughs> thinks a different way. She hot? Uh, <laughs> no. Take her out. Just kidding. <laughs> Bang her. My friend is a hot therapist, and I'm like, dude, your clients want to. And she's like, no. I'm like, there's no way that she's like really cute and has these big boobs. I'm like, there's no way they're not just watching your boobs, Joe. I've girl. been looking to get into the setup <laughs> of a porno. <laughs> Uh, give me her number. I'd love to go there. She's my really problem. Anal. <laughs> What's my problem? I just can't find the one. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's good. You seem to be doing the right things. Maybe uh, don't. It's been six months. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't even tried dating at all just because I don't want to get in the same situation. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's uh, obviously a pattern correct. you're acknowledging, which is good. Yeah. You've had six months away. You know what you want. I would say just go in there a little more hard headed and just be a little more clear, you know, and it, the second you see a red flag, call it and maybe try to set it up a little bit differently this time when you start talking to someone, you know, don't just kind of say you'll do whatever. Don't just go to a bar. 
try to find a way to maybe set it up a little differently. You know? I would say go to AA, pose as a recovering alcoholic. <laughs> they love that there. No, but uh, <laughs> don't do that because then you're going to get a relapser. <laughs> That's what, you don't want a relapser. <laughs> I had a roommate that kept relapsing. I was like, this is getting to be a lot. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. He'd be so rude to me. I'm like, you're not that drunk. You just saved up some insults. <laughs> I haven't even been drinking. <laughs> okay, this is not. <laughs> like, your shirt's ugly. I'm like, fuck yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. Well, good luck. And uh, assalamu alaikum. Shalom. Mm -hmm. And let us know how it goes. Awesome. All right, well, Thank you very much for the advice. You're, you're welcome, man. All right, bud. Yeah, have a good one. All right, you too. All right. Love you, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Did I say I love him at the end? <laughs> Jesus Christ, what was that? I need to go to therapy. Why did I just We fall all need to go to I therapy. I feel so hard for him. I you did you. fall in love with him. Well, he is your ex. Yeah. yeah we should he said five it. years. He said it's, he has your same dating Yeah, pattern. Tinder. Yeah. I knew I knew him. Um, What are we doing here, guys? Am I helping? I don't know. I think that was... I think he's... Well... He already is aware. By the way, if he tells his therapist he did that, she'll be like... Or he'll be like... Yeah, that's what this is. Don't yeah, yeah. call into podcasts. You know, well, his podcast was telling me that maybe what I need to do is fucking Justin, we've drink been working more. six months on you. Have you, you ever like, have you ever dated someone sober? Uh I think I have. Feels pressure. I actually I actually dated a girl who was pretty much sober for most of our relationship. But I probably on was purpose? like, she or was she on just purpose. kind of like didn't drink that much. She just didn't drink that much. I right. think it made her feel sick. And uh, but like I would like, but what it would result in would be like I would be like one of his girls, Justin's yeah, girls, because I'd be the like, well, I'm gonna go out Sunday to watch football with the guys, yeah. you know. And I'd be like, I have my one day of the week. I know. Let's it get must... blackout drunk. I always wonder. I never think about that from like the guys' point of view when they date me, that I don't drink. But I have gone on like dinners just with. I think that it ultimately gets to the point where you are like, I don't really want to like, it's kind of like an icebreaker. Yeah. I find more than like a lifestyle thing that you want. You I know. haven't, I just haven't had a boyfriend come home like wasted in three boyfriends. Oh, you're doing it wrong. I mean, three that boyfriends. The dream? the dream to have to like deal with someone who sharded just like you in that <laughs> coffee shop. And you, you don't listen. You. The moral of the story is first of all, we're sponsored by Tampax Pearl pockets, but also you do not need to drink to share your pants. You no. can be completely sober and still have the joy of shitting your pants. Oh, without question. Just no. drink a little coffee. It looks like Jaeger. Yeah, drink a coffee. Go to Six Flags. Ride all the rides. If you go to Six Flags. And you don't shit your pants. And you're on the rides drinking coffee and you don't shit your <laughs> pants. You're well, kind then, of, you, there's no hope for you. Yeah. Thank you. For you should start drinking. Me. Yeah. Um. This is, well, this was just. Did we do it right? We did it. Okay. Did we do it right? We did it right this it was time. Great. We did it right. Thank you guys. Thank you, Gareth. Thank you have a, you, you're recording your podcast or you're recording your uh, album. Yes, in uh, Madison, Wisconsin, <laughs> August twenty fourth. Uh, I'm more anxious than I just want to. I want to have it done. Have you had any of that? Have you had TV sets or anything yet? Anything that's like. Don't put it like that. Uh, I have like <laughs> two minutes of material that's ever been seen by the world. Not really, no. I mean, there's like, yeah, I don't really have You much. feel ready for it? Yeah. Because I feel like I've never wanted to have, everyone's like, you should do an album or something. I'm like, I'm, I don't know if I'll ever feel like well, I will going won't. on the road r relentlessly yeah. and just pounding the same hour yeah. does make you feel ready. It's It changes the fun you have as far as like. Hopefully my ex-agent's watching. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully your ex-agent's Justin. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I feel um, um, it's it's time. It's time. It's time. I know. I want to get. I'm ready to. You are for sure. All right. Well, thank you for coming in. You're my favorite. You're so thank funny. You. You're so cool. You're my Gareth's thank you. so, so cool. funny. funny. He's not great on Instagram. Let's be real. No, but <laughs> it's not really his medium. No. But he's so funny. I'm trying so hard. <laughs> you're not. I'm. Not. I would say you're not trying even a little. <laughs> Which is the charm of it. You got to go either way. You got to go either really good trying at trying really yeah. hard. You're good at it. Or not trying. I wake up thinking about, like, I'll be like, oh, oh I, I should do that. Or I'll buy, like, a prop and think about it. I do the thing where people are like, you, you know, that you can frame this stuff better if you try. I'm like, <laughs> hey, it's up. There's nothing you can do now. <laughs> They're like, no, there still is. I'm like, it's too late. I'm going to do TikTok. Oh, yeah. What? Why is it? It's nothing. Who needs more of this shit? It's just what it is, is it's getting dumber and younger, and we're that? aging out. I'm okay with that. I just want to make more money before I age out. I just want to get, like, 
to a place where maybe I could, you know, have a house and yeah, but if you, things you, and you don't want the house table. the a kitchen table. Built. I don't have a kitchen table, you know. I don't have side. You don't tables. have a nook. Oh, you don't have side tables. I don't have side tables. I don't have a kitchen table. What do you have? Well, because I when I remember when you were first living in L.A. Oh, the first I'm time, glad you're bringing this and up. And you were you were what is it rent a rec i was in a rent a rec and i was living on different couches and, and i was sleeping couches, in the rent a rec and you were sometimes. going to you were searching for different places to move into and yeah you had for some reason immediately had the lowest standards possible for what hovel you wanted to take <laughs> your bindle stiff into <laughs> and you were saying how you didn't need a kitchen you didn't need a stove. oh my god so that place that i almost moved into that was a bachelor and then i ended up dating my ex-boyfriend and just moved into his place and then was in a very uh, stressful, unhappy mm -hmm. relationship for three years because we lived together. But no security deposit. But I didn't have to pay security I deposit. Could no, nail anything I wanted under the walls guilt free. We moved into a new place. <laughs> I did have a security oh, no. deposit. And I paid the rent. But <laughs> um, he was a very nice guy. Oh. <laughs> but I was trapped for three years. Okay. Isn't that weird when you feel trapped and then you get out of something and you go, oh, it's so weird. I was never trapped. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, I was never. I just created a huh. cage around myself. It's I so weird. I imagined bars. Yeah, there was nothing there. And I just like wasted three years of two people's lives for zero reason not friends i was like we'll be friends no 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 friendship nothing yeah wish him well good luck young man yeah. um but i ended up moving in with him but then i moved back into my car uh i was living in my car about i don't know six months ago when you no, said living, no, I'm living out of my car, I was living. I've lived places. out of my car. I just, I, I made a mistake and lived with another boyfriend, and then I was like, I gotta get the fuck out of here immediately. So then I was just like, yeah. we'll find couches. And, and now? And now I have my own place yeah, with a kitchen. With a kitchen. Do you use it? Yeah. Okay. See? I cook all day. Good. Well, all I, day, fucking long. I, I cook. I clean. I love anal. <laughs> Come on, I'm a dream. I sweat profusely. And then we it's just cut to the awesome. Tampax boardroom where they're like, I don't know if this is the right direction for the new campaign. Why is she saying that in the kitchen? Tampax Pro, you guys owe me so much money, by the way. I plugged the shit out of this on my really popular podcast. Yeah, yeah you've been plugging her. She's finally plugging you, asshole. Yeah, and I put it in my butt. That's yeah. how much I like anal. Yeah. I fucking shove tampons up my asshole. Yeah, I you feel like the that? sponsorship's getting a little wonky. Can maybe. I... It's tenuous. Talk to you guys, Tampax. Yeah. I need some money. Um, before we go, I forgot to tell how our story about when we first met. Why don't you? Okay. Do you want me so, to, yeah, why don't you do it? So Gareth and I met at a comedy club in New York, and we had a friend in common. Who, so I was excited to meet Gareth because my friend was always talking about you. And uh, so we talked. We had a good time. And in that process of chatting, um, I the thing I remembered the most was when I was telling Gareth that people would ask to see a picture of my dog and I would show them, I had a picture of a close up of my dog's vagina and I would show them as a joke. Yeah, it was like a <laughs> This picture. hot picture of my dog's beef. And so then the next day, I thought it would be really funny to send him that picture because I didn't have one on my phone. So I was gonna send it to him via email. So I scrambled around, I had to get his email from my friend. I got his email and I was like, wrote in all caps, like this is urgent. And then I sent the picture of my dog's vagina. And then, uh, Gareth, why don't you explain So on my happened? end, I got a picture of a dog's vagina. <laughs> and I knew it was from Annie, obviously. And I was like, why am I being sent this? Because then I remembered that I actually wasn't talking to Gareth. I was talking to someone else about that. So, so I just I, added nowhere. It probably nowhere. took three emails or four emails before it was like acknowledged. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, this is, for me, not a callback. For me, this is a dog <laughs> vagina initiator as like, let's communicate in the human world. <laughs> Here, I'm Annie. This is my dog's vagina out of nowhere. I think it's pretty accurate. Well, we're, st we we're friends. And that dog's dead now, so you've what? got gold. You've got gold in that fucking inbox. Well, I think... No we one else is going to see that pussy. She's dead. Oh. That's a dead dog's vagina. All right. And again, Tampax, reach out to <laughs> Annie. She is ready to... We are officially sponsored by Tampax Pearl Pockets. And uh... all right, guys, Pizza Hut. <laughs> Period hot. Thank you, Gareth. Thank you. Thank you, Brenton. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Sweaty Armpits. Thank you, and Sandy's. And Sandy's. <laughs> Is that funny? <laughs> <laughs>